So, welcome to another War Game Review from the PlayersAid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're shifted over to this side of the shop because this box is so <laughs> huge. But today we're taking a look at Red Alert. And it's his Space Fleet Warfare. Uh, it's designed by Richard Borg. So, as you can imagine, this uses a system very similar to the Commands and Colors system. Which we've been playing a lot of recently. Yes. And enjoying... The heck out of it. Yes. Because it's just unadulterated fun. Yes. I'm going to say it. It's just fun. And this is a sci-fi version. Yeah. It's put out by PSC Games. And if you know anything about PSC Games, the PSC stands for Plastic Soldier Company. So they do... They do plastic minis. miniatures. Right. And these are awesome. Yes. If you... <laughs> you can see some of it on the table. And I'll show you a bit more here in a second, but... Go and watch the unboxing video. <laughs> I spent like half an hour just geeking out because it's so much plastic in this box. Well, and, and when you hold some of them, they literally have a heft to them. Yes. They have real weight. These are, a, I, I, I don't it's know. It's amazing. I think it's like a heavy vinyl plastic. Yeah, it, it feels some of them so big. <laughs> well, and, it, and they're thick and solid. They're not hollow in any way, nope. shape, or form. Yep. It is full, deep, molded plastic. Yes. And it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's so, as you can imagine, you can kind of see it's a star field divided into three sections. Just like a Just battlefield like in CNC Ancients or Napoleonics. Um, you have your units are made up of groups of the same type of ships. So you have like fighters, destroyers, cruisers, battleships, flagships. There's a ton of carriers, expansions for carriers. Dreadnoughts. Yeah, there's like a space station. Yeah, there's You can get so a vice admiral, a second flagship. There's a ton extra out there on top of this. This box is huge. It is chock full uh, of everything. Like, and, and this was a Kickstarter that I think was... Was it last year? Late last year, give or take. Yeah, so this is just starting to really hit tables yeah. in retail. Um it's, it's so cool. But if you've ever played things like Memoir 44 or The Great War, which PSC also did. Yes, and we enjoyed that as well. Because yes. it, it actually shares a lot of the same extra added yes. elements, which we'll talk about. And you say that, I'm like, of course. It's the, it's yeah, the same P company, PSC. Right? They, they, got the, they got the model and they added some new bling to it. That's what yes. they did. Yes. And it's good bling. It's fun bling. Yes. And that's, I the, think. that's the one thing about this game that I'm going to say right off the bat. It's fun. I really enjoy these types of games. Yeah. The card play can be frustrating at times. Well, and, and it can be frustrating, but you've just got to get that out of your mind. Yeah. It, it is about some tactics, but the reality is, and this one, there was a lot of range, and we'll talk about that, but it, it's just, it's kind of luck-based. You're rolling some dice. You're looking for a certain type of symbol and an or an explosion. You might get one or two hits, or you know what? You might roll four dice, and it's all hits. Yes. And sometimes that happens, but... You just, got, you just got to kind of throw that bad taste for poor luck and poor rolling out the window and enjoy this game. Because it's fun. Yes. And, but, you know, if you've played any of the Commands and Colors games... You understand. Anything like that, this is very much the same system. You, if you've played those and you're a veteran of those games, that's not something that you'll hate because otherwise you don't play these games, right? Yeah. Um, but you just need to keep that in mind when you go into this game. It's very different than a very tactical war game. This has tactical elements, but it... It's a lot of luck. It, yeah, it's, it's not a lot Star of luck. Fleet battles from the no. 70s where no. it's crunchy minutia. This or, is... or Talon. You know, we played Talon yeah. earlier this year, and it had a lot of really tactical elements from fire arcs to movement and pre-programmed movement. And I don't know, just really cool. Yeah, this Great is game. just move some miniatures around on the board, Shoot. blow the hell out of yeah. each other, and yeah. everyone dies. Who yeah. wins at the end? It's just... Well, and, and we were kind of laughing... And, and we've all seen Star Wars and Star Trek and these huge battles. And, you know, the rebel fleet always limps away in Star Wars with a medical frigate. Yeah. And you're a like, transport. And in this battle, literally 25,000 people die. And, and at like, least, if not 100,000 people. <laughs> that, those freaking cruisers probably have 50,000 people alone on them. But... This nobody won this battle. The red won, but nobody really won it. Yeah, they had the most it's victory points, so they won the yeah, game. But it's, like, it's destruction. Yeah, it's not unadulterated fun is what I like to yeah. call about it. It's it's just great. It's just great. It is. And the, so the biggest difference with this, and you talked about it <clears throat> with the range, is the range combat in this. So <laughs> of all the commands and colors games we've played, um, this has the most range combat. I would say. 
up to th- up to three hexes. Yeah, a three. lot of the ships were still rolling two dice, two or three dice. Yeah, sometimes some three dice. The really big ships. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Me- Memoir Forty Four had a lot of range combat with the tanks and the men and the kind of with like the Panzers, and, right? Yeah, but I felt like this just had. I don't know. I just feel like I have more of that. I agree. Because I agree. Your fleet is big, mm-hmm. um, and the board is wide open a lot of the time. Yeah, and um, the cards are very powerful. And this is something that you kind of mentioned to me whilst we were playing. Yeah. We felt like that the cards, um, the command cards, you could activate a significant number more units than in other iterations of this game. We played a lot of Napoleonics like a couple of weekends ago. Mm-hmm. And, and usually you're, you're activating one or two units, maybe three. That first card I played, I think I activated five units. That was crazy. Yes. But it's the reason that I like that is it just gets you into the action. Yes. There's no putzing around the universe. You're just it's like I'm running my ship up, I'm firing, I'm trying to kill you before you, you get a chance to shoot back. That's what you're trying to do. So cards were significantly here's one assault center. Move four four units in the center. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. And uh, and just some of the But it's awesome. Some of the combinations of orders that you give are very interesting as well. Like there were cards where you'd say, move a bunch on this side and one in the middle. Yeah. So you could really get a lot of stuff moving and going. This is a game that is, I mean, you're fighting on turn one. Yeah, you are. It is possible, you know. Yep. And that's, that's and you're rolling two and three dice. Yeah. You, you know, we like in Napoleonics, you're fighting on turn one, but you may be firing a lone artillery piece. Yeah, I'm rolling my two artillery one dice pieces, or one two dice. dice and as a crapshoot. Here you can like yeah. move a bunch and then get into it. How many laser noises and explosion noises you make during this I, game? I think we did it all night. It and was just a blast. The artwork is amazing for that. Yeah. It's, it's just really cool sci-fi artwork with lots of lasers and explosions. It's just fun. Yeah, to, the theme is... I think stuff. the theme is dripping on this one, and it's from the quality components and the, the very cool art and the great the great cards. Even, even the cards, these are called combat cards. Yes. Which these are one of the new elements to the game. Yes. They're fueled by the... The aptly named Star Tokens. Star Tokens. Really, <laughs> really, they were, went out on a limb with that one. But you use a certain amount of those to activate these cards, and they're just neat little things. Like, you play a command or an order card, and then you throw those on top. You might roll extra dice. You might bring an extra unit in. You know, a couple of them were like, attack the other guy's Star Token pile, the Parasites one. Yes. Trouble with Tribbles or whatever Trouble Parasites. Yeah. yeah, I mean... Just really cool cards that just added, once again, some luck and some fun to it. Yes. I don't know that we played any cards and I was like, boy, that really sucked. It was like, oh, that sucked, but haha, that was fun. Yeah. You know. It's the, and that's just it. We play a lot of war games, a lot of very heavy historical war games. I love sci-fi games because it's fun and it's shooty, right? It's not... I'm not yeah. like I'm not like oh no the British army got crushed in Crete. And this is had a to made up and, army. And a lot of yeah. people died, and it was really sad. This yeah. is like green versus red. Beep, 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 yeah. beep. Well, they have names, but it they're made up names. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and we joked earlier today because we played another game earlier, and you know there's no realism here. <laughs> there are no ships that are this big and can get out of Earth's orbit. Yeah. And go out into the stars hundreds of millions of light years away. That, that's an exaggeration, obviously. And shoot huge turbo lasers at each other. There's no realism here. So it's just it's just fun. Yeah. It's a fantasy setting that is really fun. In the sci-fi realm. So that means it's possible. Right? Sure. In 500 years or 1,000 <laughs> years. Who yeah. knows? But very interesting game. Yeah, and that's that's the one thing to be said about this. It is very fun to play. We do like these kind of games. Um, yeah. The one thing about this one is it's it's quick and dirty to play, but it does take a while to set up, and that's because that, that is a down. You can see. Uh, uh, I'll show you. Call Get a minute. Here. This each of these ships has two pegs and a standee. Those are optional. I've seen people on BGG just laying them down. Those just Plant, putting them in the hexes. So, so let's look at what that would look like. It's not the same. It's not as satisfying. It's just not the it's same. It's entirely playable. It has yeah. adds no functionality. Yeah. I like having the ships flying around. It takes a little bit extra to set up. 
Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to store them like that because that might break if they're stored like that in the box. So setting this game up is going to be a little arduous. We're going to have to spend 15 to 20 minutes getting out these spindles and, you know, but that... That's part of the that's part of the the experience. Yeah, as that's well. that's the toss up for me. Not a big deal because the game plays quickly, and I'm going to yep. play this two or three times. It's like Gloomhaven. Yeah, we would set setting that game up, but we play it three or game. four times. Yeah, and this is a game that we would set it up and just do two or three scenarios. You're you're never going to set this up and do one. You'd, ne- you'd yeah, it's it's too fun not to. <laughs> yeah, you just have a good time. Um, so so I feel like I'm getting lost in the excitement, and I'm sorry for that, but. <laughs> We just had a really great time with this one, but I really enjoyed the different units. You yes. know, the fighter class units, the cruisers, the destroyers, the battleships, the flagships. They were all very different, all moved different. They shot different. You know, destroyers had that really cool ability where they could warp one extra hex. As long as it got them adjacent to an enemy unit. And then attack said yeah. And then they, yeah. And it's like, that was really cool. So you're, I felt like chess in some ways. You know how in chess you're always kind of watching that knight. And you're like, okay, I can do this way or that. And you're kind of waiting for that trap to spring. Yes. That was kind of the way I felt with those. You did an excellent job in our play tonight of using your fighters to kind of outflank me on the, on the right flank. And really almost destroyed, I think, my cruisers. And and it was... Yeah, I think I took out your destroyers over there. Yeah, it was very valuable to you because I think you took three three points. And I only got one after I kind of mopped up your fighters. So that was very... That was a great use of those. Yes. I started doing that a little bit on the left flank. And I chased your cruisers back. But it, I really liked that aspect of it. There are some tactical choices in how you're going to move your units and use your units. After you play this three, four, maybe five times, I think that's really going to come out. Yeah. And I think it's going to be even more exciting and feel a lot more tactical. Yes. Uh, there's there's a lot of really interesting stuff with this one. And what I'll do is I'll show you the board and we'll kind of go through some of those details that make this actually a much more rich game yeah. than it might look like on the surface of just miniature sh- moving and shooting because there's actually a lot of stuff to consider. Yeah. Um, so you can really kind of get into this one as well. Well, and, and once again, I apologize for getting so super excited <laughs> because there really is a lot of depth to this game. Yes. I, I think that's kind of hidden because the miniatures are so awesome. I, I think I would just play this over and over and over again going pew, 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 pew you know, and it's just... But there's a lot to it. Yes. There's a lot to it. I'll show you that right now. What we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts afterwards. So here's a look at the board. And as you'd expect from a Commands and Colors game, you've got your little dotted lines divide the board into three sections. Um, So you've got the middle. And then as you're looking at it, you've got the left flank and the right flank. They're called kind of sectors in this one. Um, The unit composition uh, is based on a chart. Um, the play chart is actually really good. Um, so you have here a flagship and it comes with three fighters. So if you look here, this is my flagship and it's got three little support fighters that always stay with it. That's kind of the exception to the rule. Everything else is a number of ships. So there's a heavy battleship squadron, which is four battleships, or a normal battleship squadron, which is only three. And the same for cruisers, and the same for destroyers, and the same for fighters. This is a really handy play aid. Tells you movement, tells you range and dice, tells you what hits you, some special abilities about um, ignoring fighters, um, other notes, and then how you react to red alerts. And then it has a victory point cost. So if you destroy a flagship, it gets you eight victory points. That's really good. If you destroy a fighter squadron, only one. And there's a sliding scale in between. And then there's a point cost value over here if you do squadron building. And a lot of this game is at least semi-squadron building. So normally, what you would do is you shuffle these task force cards. Uh, Shuffle these, there's a whole bunch of them. And you draw one, and this is what you start with here. So this is 100 points worth of units. Uh, So you start with a flagship unit, a battleship, a heavy cruiser, regular cruiser, heavy destroyer, regular destroyer, and a fighter. And then the scenario might say, you also get 40 points worth of ships to use. So you look back here, and you've got 40 points to spend here. So you could spend a lot more in getting a heavy battleship squadron, 
or you could buy an absolute ton of fighters and some light units, things like that, to supplement your forces. And then on the back here, you've got all the expansion stuff. So if you wanted to get a second flagship, you could do that. Very expensive though, 31 points. Um, you can get a carrier ship, you get a dreadnought. Unbelievably expensive, but super fun. Because um, those also have fighters with them, so they can roll six dice in close combat. They're just slow pondering things. But they're worth 12 victory points. <laughs> so there's a lot of fun stuff in the expansions too. Um, but you build out your fleet, and then the scenario tells you how to line them up. Um, and, and there's some extra rules about that. Because uh, this, what you buy is kind of a secret. Um, and then you kind of lay them all out, and that's what you've got. And then you get playing. And like your average Commands and Colors game, you'll have a deck of combat cards. And these tell you, move two ships on... The, uh, on the right wing, or this one says, I'm in command, and has a bunch of special abilities. And this one says, move two in every sector. Um, move three on the right wing, right? So you do what it says, and so it's according to these sectors. So you play your three on the right, you're looking over here thinking, okay, I've got my fighters, they can move, and they can move four spaces. So these fighters, they have a little token that goes along with them. There's five hexes, they can move five spaces. And then the bottom numbers, they can roll three dice at range one, and one dice at range two. So they can move four spaces. So one, two, three, four. They can just zoom up here. One, two, three, four. And then my battleship, well, he's got really long range. He can shoot four hexes away. Three dice, three dice, three dice, one dice. But he can only move two. So he's kind of a slow pondering beast here. Um, so he's going to go one, two. And then my last thing is my cruiser. He's got two movement. He's not going to move because he's going to chuck three dice in battle against the fighter. So that's very simply how movement works. And then you resolve combat in any order that you choose. So let's say we've got the cruiser against the fighters. Well, the cruiser's going to roll three dice. And you're chucking the dice, and this is a very, very good roll. So a star is a currency. There's a whole bunch of these star tokens. For each star token you roll, you simply get a token. And the tokens you use to activate combat cards, which are a separate hand of mini cards that you have, or to activate um, kind of special abilities. So. If you want to battle back after being attacked, or if you want to, if you kill someone and you want to do pursuit movement, you have to spend tokens to do that. Um, in Command and Colors Napoleonics, melee battle back happened automatically if you didn't retreat. This you have to spend, because um, you can battle back at range and things like that. Uh, so it, that's a neat little action economy you have on top of things to worry about. But it's nice that this isn't just a blank. You get something for it, at least. Now, the important part of this is we have our cruiser and he's rolling dice against the fighter. And what he has here is um, a green and an orange. And if we look at this play aid card, the fighters down here, is, this is the hit unit hit on, on a green and an orange. And what you'll notice is, is that little fighter token has the green circle on it. So you're always hit by that's your unit designation. So you're always hit by green, because um, that's what they are, and you're always hit by an orange, and orange is a wild hit. Orange will hit everything. Um, so that was very good. We did two kills. They've only got two fighters with them. Those get eliminated. And I keep this green token. And we keep it because on the back, it's worth one victory point. That's printed on here, but this is a, no, like an actual reminder I have a little display that I keep that in. That's one victory point to me. Excellent. Now, over here we had our fighter and our battleships move. What we'll do is we'll fire with our fighters first on the destroyer to see if we can take it out, because then we can use the battleship to take on them, the, the flagship. So the fighter's gonna roll three dice. Now if you look at the destroyer's token, it's a blue triangle. So the, the, we need to roll blue triangles, and we need to roll 
orange explosions. So we roll three dice. Oof. And we roll nothing. This is a miss, and this is a miss. We did roll a red alert, though. A red alert is kind of the equivalent to rolling a flag or a retreat. The thing here is, though, and this is a, where your flagship becomes really, really important. So if we look on here, this is a destroyer. So we look under the destroyer bit. First off, they can ignore a blast from a fighter, just because the fighters are so small and the destroyer's got thick armor. While we didn't have any um, blasts, so that doesn't affect us here. But you basically, if you're a smaller ship, you have to roll two hits to hit a bigger ship, effectively. Now over here it says, when you're adjacent to the command vessel, you can ignore one red alert. And well, your flagship is your command vessel. We're adjacent to it, so we can ignore this red alert. And we're able to ignore that because we weren't hit. Yet we, normally, you would get a red alert token, you'd be forced to retire, and then you'd need to spend star tokens to resolve your red alert crisis. You know, it's more of, we got a little bit of battle damage or a system was destroyed. So we need to fix that and repair it. This is kind of other things that are happening, so it requires our attention. Luckily, we're near the command ship, so we can ignore that. So not a good roll from our fighters. So now you get into some really interesting tactical choices. Because the battleship, they're gonna roll three dice against the destroyer. You think we're pretty, pretty decently gonna wipe that out. Or we can attack the flagship. Now the flagship's interesting, because it has these three what are called cap fighters. Um, these are effectively meat shields. So you have to destroy but all three of these fighters before you can destroy the flagship. But the, these little fighters add to its range one, its kind of close combat attack value. So if you look here, the flagship has a two, three, three, one, but that two for the close combat is modified by plus one per cap fighter still alive. So right now we're rolling two, three, four, five close combat dice. And I, let me tell you this, five close combat dice is absolutely brutal. So the battleship's got a choice to make. The battleship can probably withstand a hit from the destroyer, because remember the destroyer is kind of shooting up a couple of classes. So the battleship can actually ignore the first blast from a destroyer but the battleship is going to have a hard time surviving five dice from the flagship. So in this instance, the battleship thinks, all right, I'm going to roll my three dice against the flagship, okay? Because we think we can, we can fend this off a little easier than we can fend this off. We're trying to pick off some of these fighters. And this is fantastic. This is exactly what we're looking for. This is a miss because the flagship needs purple squares but we got two blasts. And because battleships and flagships are both purple squares, they're both at a capital ship size, there's no kind of mitigation of those. Um, so we just remove this and we remove this. And what that does is that really takes those really nasty teeth out of that, um, out of that close combat value. It used to be five, now it's only two, plus one is three. So really, for firing purposes, this is a three, 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 one, and so is this. So it evens our odds out a little bit there. Basically, that's the end of my turn. Uh, and what I would do is I would just then draw a command card back into my hand to replace the one that I've used. And then I have an option. I can either draw two star tokens or I can draw one star token, and I can draw one of these combat cards. So we'll draw one of these combat cards, because these are really fun. So here, the, these combat cards are things that break the rules and give you special abilities. So if you look here, it costs one star token to activate these. So you do need to keep that economy of those ticking over. You can play this card when the unit's going to battle back. Battling back also costs two star tokens. Only spend one star for the unit to battle back, so it's a discount. Unit will also battle back with one additional die. So these are things that enhance what you would normally do, or they break the rules so that you can do extra cool things. This one is Battle Fury, for example. P 
play this card after an ordered unit's successful close quarters combat. Successful close combat means the enemy unit is eliminated or retires from its hex. The unit may pursue, move on to that hex, and bonus combat, close quarters or ranged. So here, where we our cruisers eliminated those fighters, if I had played that card and spent that, they could move into this hex, which is not normally allowed, and then if there was anyone within range, I could have a shot at range or at melee, at close combat, melee, close combat. So these combat cards are really fun ways to enhance what they're doing or to do extra things. This isn't just a deck of combat of command cards. And this, this aspect we first saw in um, The Great War, which is also from PSC games, so they were onto a winner with that. But I think it really fits into this theme really well with the cards that they've used. You get really cool space maneuvers or, you know, firing basically your broadside phaser cannons at, at, at close combat, things like that. Just really cool stuff that keeps this game flowing. But, but that's really it. Um, these star tokens are really, really important keeping track of those. Um, if you want to battle back, you have to spend those. Um, if, you, if you do have to retire because you acquired a red alert, to get rid of that red alert, at the beginning of your turn, you have to spend one or two tokens to get rid of this. Well, then they can act normally. Um, and, and it's possible to get multiple red alerts going on. And you have to kind of flee battle. That gets really hairy. You have to spend a lot to get them back in if you, if you can afford it. But all in all, the game is really simple. You can see it plays on this kind of cloth mat. And generally speaking, it, 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 you can see the kind of the crease here. But it's very flat. Um, you get the odd crease in it, but the units are so heavy and this material is fairly malleable that it just it all kind of flows to the side. It's not a big deal. Um, it is big. <laughs> it kind of hangs off the edge of my table, but it's big enough. My table is big enough where we kind of fudge it if we ever had to get to the sides, but most of the battles you fight in the middle anyway. Um, I didn't find myself retreating that far off the board or anything like that, but there might be a situation where I need to play on the floor or buy myself a bigger table. So always a fun excuse to do those kind of things. But all in all, you can see these, these are on really cool standees. This is a beautiful looking game. The one thing I was worried about, and I'll be honest, this was something that did concern me when I first opened the game, is the pegs and the standees, how well they would go together. Um, Cause I've been spoiled with games like X-Wing and Armada that have really good standees. You know, you can be careful with that kind of stuff. And I dismantle them all. But here, yeah, there's an absolute ton of them. And I was, you know, I, I've, I wanted to make sure that they would sit. Here's me quite forcefully flinging them upside down. And it took a long time for those to come over. The, the pegs stick in really well. We didn't have any problems with any of them falling off or being loose. Like, especially these kind of smaller, lower ones for the capital ships. These capital ships have much lower bases because the plastic is actually quite heavy. Uh, but the small ones, they all stand really well. That was the one thing that concerned me because I played Battle of Britain from PSC a while back. And the, some of the planes were loose and we had to glue them onto the standees, which is not ideal. This does not suffer from that in any way. And we used a very significant amount of the standees and bases. You've used a lot. There's almost twice as many in the bag we didn't use, because you played huge battles in this, but didn't have any problems with any of the miniatures we used, and that's a, a really good credit to the production value of this game. That was the one thing I was concerned about. Totally not an issue, so big kudos to them for that. So what I'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts here. Uh, once more, this play is really excellent. Um, and I really like it when they include the expansions on a play aid, so I don't have reams and reams of extra bits and pieces lying around. They did a lot of future proofing with that. Um, what we'll do, wrap up with a few final thoughts, uh, get out of your hair. So that was a look at the kind of board, and just some of the unit types and how they interact with each other. And so you see those bigger units that kind of move around, blowing everything up. And they can withstand a few hits from things like the fighters. Like those battleships can shake off the fighters. It's really hard. Yeah, they ignore the, the blast symbols. 
yes. from fighter types. And the, and they can ignore one from the Caruso and the Destroyer mm-hmm. the as strike, well. Do they call it a strike class? Oh, the strike class, yeah. Yeah. And then having your flagship with his cat fighters, those that's a really neat element that yeah. I really like. Yeah. But then keeping those, because a lot of cards play off of your flagship, having those next to other units or units being able to ignore red alert symbols, mm-hmm. that stuff's really powerful. But then you're like, oh, I can't lose my flagship. Yeah. Because <laughs> when you lose your flagship, you have it, to you lose your hand size goes down by one. It does, and it's pretty frankly, it's pretty much over because the flagship is worth eight victory points, which is in most scenarios is very significant. Yeah, the scenario we played tonight was four, I think fourteen or thirteen. Yeah. So if you lost your flagship, that's eight. That's like sixty percent. That's bad. So I, you know, we really protected it. And it was interesting to see both of us move our flagship up as we both neared the victory point goal. Because we were trying to kind of get that extra shot in. Yeah, you want to get that. To kill. That was cool. And I think we both used those very well. We protected them, then moved them into combat to kind of bring their firepower to bear. I, I really liked that. I, I think the dice were amazing. A lot of the dice that we've played with with CNC, they're stickers. Yep. Which, which are okay. It's fine. These were engraved custom dice. And, and they were beautiful. really nice. Um, what do you think of the mat? You know, I, I had my concerns at first. I know, I whipped it at it and you were like, it's a I was like, well, why are, yeah, I'm like, why are we, but it, it works. It really works. Yeah. This table's a little too small for it. Yeah. But the reality is the, the last row is hanging off, so you could still keep your guys here. But I liked it. I, I thought it was nice. Yeah, I don't hate it. There's enough miniatures and tiles on the, to keep it basically flat. Um, it, it, this game does take up a lot of space. It does. It takes up literally my whole table. From, from yeah. end to end. Um, so that's one thing. Do you want a decent sized space for this? Well, and it's a big box, so you're not going to be able to fit this in your in your uh, cubicle from uh, Ikea or... Yeah, maybe. If, if, could you fit it in length? I, I guess you could, but it's it's going to be longer, I think. It's just a big box. It reminds me of Conan and, yeah. and yeah. U-Boat. I have those on top of my uh, and I, I have I have all the expansions in here. Yes. And I'm not able to fit everything in comfortably into the box. Yeah. So I do have the I one keep extra the box. tiles in one of the expansion yeah. boxes. But all, all the plastic and the mat and the dice and the tokens do fit in here. And those expansions, man, they bring the dreadnoughts. They bring the yeah. uh, admiral. Uh, what, you, you, it's your vice admiral. Your so you vice admiral. Oh, that's so cool. Um, what were the other the 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 meteor showers. Yeah, and so there's the, the, there's mini expansions that add some extra weird, cool terrain stuff. So there's yeah. one that's like a a rift in space, and then literally you have like a tile, and it's got like one, two, three, four, five, six on it. So you randomly come out. You, you roll three dice, uh-huh. and if you roll doubles, it tears space in that direction. Ah, and if you roll trebles, it tears space twice in that direction. Oh wow! And you literally put more tiles out. And the tear moves across the board. Okay. And if your stuff gets hit by it, it gets destroyed. Get destroyed and sucked in, rolls and Nice. Bounce, and it's, you know, impossible to rain that you now have to fight around. Just yeah. really neat zany stuff like that that just makes yeah. makes it fun. And we didn't play with those, but we definitely want to. Well, that's in up fact, next. Yep. We we may go ahead and just whip it out and, and play one. But I, I like that because that adds some replayability to the game. Yeah. Um but yeah, I really think you could play this game five, six times before you really get comfortable with the different tactics. So and I, think, I think that's a good thing because you're going to get a lot of replayability. And the base game comes with... It looks like there's... Ten scenarios? Uh, so it's ten, ten scenarios. The first two are kind of training scenarios. Right. And then it really starts to get into like... It's it's kind of a storied campaign. Yeah, it's sci-fi. So it, it's a big. theme, thematic there, and, and then all of the expansions come with um, anywhere from like two to four scenarios as well. Right, and those are also numeric and carry on the war. So you, it escalates to get more and bigger ships. Different so you probably have twenty scenarios. I think it's 20, 21, 22. There's a lot. So there's a lot of replayability in this box. There's a lot of fun in this box. There's a lot of pew pew laser noises in this box. Yeah, if you like sci-fi. Uh, and you like commands and colors, this is basically a must-buy. But, word of warning... It is a pricey it's, one. It's pricey. You're In this game, you get what you pay for. That's the, that's the one thing I'll say. This is... 
I think it was hundred dollars retail with the box, just the base yeah. box, and but and I've <laughs> shamefully I've paid a I've bought a lot of hundred dollar games in my time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is one where I'm like I can uh, I can see where my money's gone. Yeah, right. Well, I, you can see it in the quality of this the is a hundred. You know, yeah, it's a lot of money, but at least you're getting yeah your money's worth. I feel like in this yep. one anyway. So you you know keep that in mind. But, you know, once again, I think we talk a lot about value for our dollar. Mm -hmm. Replayability is a huge part of that value. This is a $100 game. If we play this 25 times, what's my math? That's $4 a play. I, I, I'm okay with that. Right. And That's a lot of value. I'm not someone that does that. Right. I don't. Our father-in-law talks about that a lot with us. Yeah. We've played Gloomhaven a thousand times, so it's, you well got your money right. for that. But I, I, I've, I'm trying to make myself not think that way. Okay. Because the game has merits, and it's worth a hundred dollars just to have my, it in your collection. Yeah. I'm not trying yeah. to be a cheapskate and get my most. Get my oh, I'm I can't pay more than thirty five dollars. Come off. Yeah. No. You know what? If I pay a hundred dollars for it and I play it five times, damn it, that was twenty dollars a play. Yeah. That it's was still well worth. Still it. valuable. I, you know, I'd spend that money doing something else. Yeah. And I played a freaking sweet game. And one other comment I would have about this game: we were setting it up. And your son is five. Yes. Five and a half. He'll be six in December, right? Yes. You know, and, and he's a boy. And he's a boy's boy. I mean, that, that... Very much so. That's what he does. And he walked by and you could kind of see, he, he turned and he's like, ooh. He loves Godzilla. He loves big <laughs> plastic toys. Yeah. And he came over and what did he say? Do you remember what he said? I don't... He was like... He said, Dad, are these your ships? Yeah. And he was... And then he said, are those Grant ships? And it's like... Yep, and we're going to blow each other up. Yes, we are. And, and it was just really cool to see that. I, I think my daughters, they were not in the room. I think they would feel the same way. Yeah. They, they love playing games with me. I think this is something that we could use almost as a training ground for those yeah. children over the next five years to really get them into that wargaming mindset. Memoir 44, Command and Color Ancients and Napoleonics, and then, and then this. Great War, a Great War as well from PSC. To me, that was also very cool to see. Yes. Um, and I don't know what I thought he would say. I mean, if they were cardboard tokens, he wouldn't have noticed. No. But he noticed the cool minis up on the, the pylons or whatever we want to call yeah, these. flying around in space. And that was cool. That was a neat thing. What I enjoy about this is that it is a... Sci-fi fleet battles game in a box. Yeah, it's a hundred dollars. I paid a hundred dollars for Star Wars Armada, and, and we've get, played. And you get three ships in that. Well, and we've played that too, and we've enjoyed the crap out of that X-wing. We love. Yes, we've played that a lot. But, I really like X-wing. But the fleet games, I'm like, ooh, there's there's yep. like a Warhammer One Battlefleet Gothic way out of print. I, people play it at Gen Con. Looks and like, beautiful, yeah. and I'm like. This isn't on that level. A lot of those games have a lot more detail. In yeah. It. But, like, I, I get a really good feel out of it. Here's my line of awesome ships yeah. of different types, of moving, shooting, and it feels I, it feels awesome. You got blown up a battleship, yeah. you're like, yeah, that was awesome. doesn't feel so awesome when it's your battleship. No. But, you know, it's part of it. You lose a battleship to then strike with your flagship and, and exact revenge. So it's nice right? to have a fast-playing sci-fi fleet yeah. game that's just... Really fun and very accessible. Yes, I would agree with that. It is red and green. Yes. So so the units are red and green, which I'm sure that's going to be a huge problem for those who have red green color blindness. Yeah. the The sides aren't identical, so the sh the miniatures are physically different. But the red right. green is something that you might want to. You yeah. Know. And and they look significantly different. So I think you could. Be but, okay with that, but, but still, it it's going to be a problem. It might be a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Josh would struggle with this, I think. One of our friends, Josh. Yeah, everything would look the same. Yeah. Apart, but you then look at the shapes. Yep. And, 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 yeah. Maybe you could, uh, we'd have to see, but just keep that in mind. If you can't, well, you, you can well, see yeah. the pieces. But, one side's red, one side's green. So, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, great game, Red Alert, Space Fleet Warfare. Really liked this. Really glad we got a copy. Really glad we had the opportunity to play. And I'm excited to turn the video off and try to get another game going, this is, frankly. This is it. So let's hurry this up and move on. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it. This is Red Alert PSC Games, available on their website. I'm for sure from you, every other retailer at the moment. It's brand new. Um, so check it out. 
Uh, we've been the theplayasa.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant.